in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course. This was his course, and his wife was of a daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. But I'm going to tell you something, they still had sin in their life. They still had sin in their life. But it was so good about them, through them there was going to be a king born. He wasn't the king of kings, but John the Baptist was going to be a king. He was going to make straight the way for the king of kings to come. Amen? Are you not a king here today? God says you're a king. But you're not the king of kings. You're a king. You're a priest before the Lord. We had to have John the Baptist come. He was crowned as a king. But Elizabeth was barren. She couldn't have a child. And they got very old. But before they got old, Zacharias prayed a prayer to God. He says, oh God, give me a child. And Elizabeth prayed a prayer, oh God, give me a child. Because back then, not to have a child was, was uh, uh, you were just uh, disapproved by society. They wanted to see your family. They wanted to see a string of kids. That was your pride and joy. But she couldn't have any. And they both prayed, and nothing happened. Have you ever prayed a prayer, nothing is happening? Well, they got very old. And during that time, they just said it isn't going to happen. God is not going to give us a child. And she was in the same case of Abraham and Sarah. She was too old to have children. Even when the angel came to him, he was convinced it is over. And in the natural, it was over. She wasn't going to have a child. But God says, I'm the God of the impossible. And that angel, Gabriel, says, Elizabeth is going to get pregnant and you're going to be overjoyed with it. And Zechariah said, how could this be? And the angel says, you know, with God, nothing is impossible. And Zacharias, you need, needed to really believe me. But you're going to believe. And he said, this will be a sign to you, Zacharias, that your faith stand out there. And you ponder on this and don't forget about what I said to you. He says, you're not going to be able to talk from this day forward until you name that child John. And he came out of that temple, and he wasn't able to talk. Isn't that amazing? Now, most of us would run right to the ER and find out what's going on. And most of us wouldn't show up on Sunday morning to church because we had lost our voice. I mean, totally lost our voice. Something went wrong with our bodies, and they're running a bunch of tests. And yes, I would be at the temple, I'd be at church, Doing what I need to do, but I can't be there because I lost my voice. That's how we operate, amen? But that's not how Zacharias operated. It said that he finished his course. He went back in the temple and he offered up prayers to God. His job was to offer up incense before the Lord. For the prayers of the saints outside. And he said then they went home. And I'll tell you what, what happened is Elizabeth started getting young again. And Zachariah said, you know, I'm, I'm getting young too. And lo and behold, she got pregnant. This, this is a miracle. Only young people get pregnant. God says, not today. In this case, I'm bringing a king forth. And he says he'll not... Drink any wine or strong drink, and he'll be in the desert in his ministry, and people are going to come out to him. 
And as we know, that's just what happened. It also says this, that why John was in Elizabeth's womb, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what it's like to be filled with the Holy Spirit? You're strong in the Lord. That's what it is. He didn't have a problem putting away the drink. He didn't have a problem serving God. He didn't have a problem waiting in the desert until his time because he had the strength of God on the inside of him. Amen. Amen. From the womb he was filled. He didn't ask for it. God just gave it to him and said, you're going to serve me. How would you like that? That's why it's so important that each one of us be filled with the Spirit of God. How do you get that? I'll tell you how you get it. You get it on your knees. You get it in fasting. You get it in hoping. You get it in working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. That's how you get it. You get the filling of the Lord and then you get the strength of God to be able to do what he wants you to do. Like John the Baptist. Say the things that will get your head cut off. And we know that's what happened to John the Baptist. He didn't hold back a word. When Herod was there with his brother's wife and they were married, you know, got, got that big divorce going on. You know, what, you know what John the Baptist said? It's wrong that you're here with your brother's wife. It's wrong. I'll tell you what, and God says, well, many, many people say, well, what do I do? I'm on my ninth marriage. Repent. Say you're sorry. Come to Christ. Amen. I made a mistake. The blood of Christ covers it all. Amen. If you, re if you read that little note that's on those candy canes, you'll see. The white is Christ. The red it is, is his blood. And it encircles it. It encircles you and it encompasses you about. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And so the angel went to Mary and said, you're going to have a child. She said, I've never known a man. I never got close to a, a boy yet. He says, well, it's going to happen because you're highly favored. You're a highly favored person with God. And he says, your, your cousin Elizabeth, I think she was in her fifth month right then. In fact, Elizabeth for five months hid herself. She wouldn't even go outside. She didn't want anybody to see it. To think she's, what she got going on in the inside must be a tumor or something. She knew it was a child because the child was moving. You ask any young lady that has a child, those children start moving on the inside. Mary's pregnant too and she comes up. And Mary, I'm going to read out of here. In verse 39, it says, And Mary rose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and they entered into the house of Zechariah, and saluted Elizabeth. Said, Elizabeth! And when it came to pass, and when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, I want you to see this, the baby which was filled with the Holy Ghost leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, immediately, the Spirit of God fell on her. And she was filled with the Holy Ghost and spake out with a loud voice. I'm going to tell you what. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you can't sing a quiet song. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you can't pray a quiet prayer. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you move in areas in a, an abrasive way that no one else, no one else does around you because they're not filled with the Spirit. But you do. When you're filled with the Spirit, there's strength upon strength to do what you need to do. When depression comes around, you kick it out because you're filled with the Spirit of God. You're filled with the might of God. And that's what happened to Elizabeth. The Spirit of God filled her. And she says, and she spoke out with a loud voice. He says, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And henceforth from this time forward, she would said, all nations are going to call you blessed. 
and witness this to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb, and blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her in the Lord. And this is what Mary said. When the angel told her, this is what's going to happen to you. And this thing can get you killed, but God's not going to let you die, Mary, because you're not supposed to get pregnant before you get married. And you know what she said? She says, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Yes, I will be that that God wants me to be. And this is what Mary said. And Mary said, My soul do magnify the Lord. My spirit is rejoicing in God my Savior, for he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. Behold, from henceforth, all generations are going to call me blessed. All generations are going to call me blessed. She was blessed of God. She had God on the inside. Like the song said, Mary, did you know? Did you know that you'd be kissing the face of God? Did you know that your son would walk on water someday? Did you know that he would only go in places where angels have walked? Did you know this, Mary? Did you know that he was going to die for the whole world? Did you know this, Mary? She didn't know, she didn't know very much. But she was willing to go into this thing blind. That's what we should do. Behold. A servant of the Lord. God asked you to do something. Behold, I am a servant of yours, God. Who shall I send? And you say, send me. In this filthy, corrupt world that we live in. Amen. God help us. You know what the Bible says? Come out from among them. Come out from among them. And people say, come out from among what? The world. The world. No honky-tonk places no more. But we got boots on. Really? <laughs> this is a spiritual battle, people. John came for a spiritual battle. John knew you needed a savior. He needed to get you ready. John, because it's all spiritual, and that's where you get your strength from, it's from heaven. He knew you had to repent. So what did he preach on? Repentance. You know what that is? That's you getting spiritual and telling God you're sorry. You're sorry for your unforgiveness. You're sorry for your hatred. You're sorry for those things that nobody knows about. That you wouldn't tell anybody you're sorry for those things. Amen. You're getting right in the spirit with God because it's the, old, the only thing that can help you is the spirit realm. Jesus came that you would get right in the spirit realm. That you would receive his spirit because nobody gets the Holy Ghost without repentance. Amen. Nobody gets born again without repentance. It's all about the spirit realm. They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. They that are after the spirit. They that are after spiritual things. It's the spirit realm that controls this realm. Do you know that? It's the spirit realm that made you. You didn't make it, it made you. It's the spirit realm that has made everything out there. Made the trees, made it all that put this thing together here that you sit under a roof. It's a spirit realm that has done all this. God says, get in the spirit and you'll find power. Get in the spirit and you'll find wisdom. Get in the spirit of things and get quit minding about the things that are underneath your feet. This world. John went and preached in the spirit of Elijah. You know the two witnesses that are supposed to come? The disciples asked him, did John? He says, they say Elijah must come first. And Jesus said, I'm telling you, Elijah already came. And they killed him. Jesus said this, you're either for me or against me. 
Are you for God? Are you living a life for God? Or are you against God? Are you here against God? Are you here saying, I want to get right with God? I want to be for God and I want to quit this other life. You say, are you talking about me? I'm talking to all of us here. We all come out of hell. We are all in the places of hell. Maybe some of us are still in the place of hell, but God says, come out, and it's through one thing. God, you can come out. I'm never going back with an attitude. I'm never going back. I'm gonna tell you the names of God. You know, somebody says, hey, what's that guy's name? And you'll say, well, I got a name for him. You know what God's name, usually you just get one name and it isn't a very good one. Sometimes it is. He's a nice guy. I can't remember his name. You know what the name of Christ is? He's got 50 here and let me rip right through them. He's called the Almighty One because he's almighty. He's called the Alpha and Omega because he's the beginning and the end of you. Of you. He's called an advocate, author and perfecter of our faith. He makes you perfect in him. Amen. You say, I'm not very perfect now. Wait till tomorrow, though. Wait till next week. Wait till next year. You're going to new heights with the Lord if you want to. He's the author. He's the bread of life. Eat this. This is my body. Eat all of it. He's a beloved son of God. He's a bridegroom. He's the chief cornerstone. He's a deliverer. He's a good shepherd. He's a great high priest. That's who he is. If they had to name him, they said there's no name. that I would, Just one name isn't good enough. He's got many names. Names to find who you are. Names to find who you are. Watch what you name your children. Make sure it means something good. He's your deliverer. He's a good shepherd. He's a great high priest. The head of the church. He says, I am. He's a great I am. Uh, he's Emmanuel, God with us. He's a judge. He's a king of kings. He's a lamb of God. He's the light of the world. The lion of Judah. The Lord of all. The mediator. The Messiah. He's the mighty one. Amen. We're going to get in the spirit. And we're going to hold hands with the mighty one. We're going to rejoice today because of the mighty one. Amen. That's who he is. And if you want to make him Lord today, all you got to do is bow your heart to where you sit and say, come into my heart. He hears you. He hears you. He's the one who sets free. He is our hope. There's no hope outside of him. Some hope in the lottery. I'm telling you, it's empty. You'll find yourself in the chicken house hung on a rope. Because that million bucks, that billion dollars, isn't enough. You need Christ. He's our hope. He's our peace. He is our prophet. He told us what was going to happen. He'll tell you where you're headed. He's your redeemer. He is a risen Lord. He is a rock. Amen. He's unmovable. He's a sacrifice of our sins. He's a savior, son of man. And son of the highest. He's the supreme creator. He created all things. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the door. He's the only door. There is no other door. There is no other way in life. Amen. There's one door. You got to go through it. You got to go through it. You got to kick it in. You got to get some fight in you. Amen. You got to get some fight in you. We like to be fighters down here. We like to see ourselves as a fighter. Fight for Christ now. Quit fighting with your husband or your wife or your children. Fight for Christ. That's how you get peace in your family. Amen. Fight for Christ. Can you fight? Everyone knows how to fight. Get an attitude. Quit. Quit. Seeing yourself defeated because this will mean nothing to you. This is a start of victory 2,000 years ago. Do you have an attitude? 
against the powers of darkness that creep into you during the night? Do you have an attitude against the powers of darkness that try to pull you down by day? Do you have an attitude against that? Get one. If you don't have it, get one. He is the door. He is the way. He is the word. He is the true vine. He is the truth. He is the victorious one. He is a wonderful counselor. He is a mighty God. He is an everlasting father. And he is a prince of peace. Can you give a shout to the Lord in the house of God? Hallelujah. Amen. That's what Christmas morning is all about, folks. Amen. Can you get red faced? Can you get red faced about the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. Get that deadness off. Amen. Say, I'm going to follow the Lord now forever. I've been following darkness too long, making excuses for myself, and I'm not going to do that anymore. Amen. And you don't have to say, but my wife or but my husband. There's no buts in this. Only your butt. Amen. That's the only one that's in it. You change and change the world around you. You change and change your family. Amen. You change. If enough of you change, you'll change a nation. The United States of America needs to come back to God. They need to come back to God. And you're the way. You're the only light of the world. Amen. Watch me and you'll see Jesus. That's what you should say.